again, if you're in business, you realize that you know trying to sell everyone, everything never works. You got to always be niche specific. You got to always laser focus down to who you want to serve and how you want to serve them. We see as people who have, again, we've consulted 42,000 people. We actually consult businesses on this sort of thing, moving themselves into the next direction. We see that mental wellness is the next big movement. So, you know, look at what are you doing for your mental wellness? What is your mindfulness program? What are you teaching your clients to get them moving in the right direction? Because again, we're dealing with the uncertainty of life, the uncertainty of disease, and then the financial nest that everything's supposed to fit in comfortably that isn't because that nest is starting to fall apart on people. So we don't want to, you know, if, if I may, I just want to tell you a quick story about where we came from. You know, Conchetta and I used to own a big fitness center in Dave Spa, New York, uh, you know, 10,000 square feet, whole nine yards, it was a fantastic place. It was our dream. And then 2008 hit. And like a lot of other people who owned huge companies in 2008, our dream evaporated. We sold out of that thing by the skin of our teeth. And we looked at each other and said, okay, how the heck are we going to feed our kids? Thankfully, because we love the health industry so much, we started writing health and wellness books, selling them through eBooks. That led us into a supplement company. So again, I'm, I'm truncating this for you real quickly, but we had a major company that uh, produced eBooks for health and fitness. And we owned a supplement company that was selling over hundred bottles a day on Amazon. Things were cranking, cranking, cranking. But then again, we saw that the future was not just in weight loss. We saw the future was not just in gyms. We saw the future was not just in, in uh, spas or having other people do things for you. You need to serve yourself in the, in the mental wellness arena. So again, mindfulness, getting what you want out of life, getting your gut right. I, I don't mean to keep harping on the mechanical aspect of this, but if your mechanical aspects aren't correct, you will never feel what you want between your ears. It is physically impossible to be at your peak level of happiness if you're not releasing the right amount of serotonin and you're not releasing the right amount of dopamine. And I'm not trying to doctor you guys out here, but these are simple facts that carry through and now we've seen are getting bigger and bigger. So again, we see that as the next big trend. So you know, those of you that are working with uh, coaching clients, uh, those of you that are starting your own businesses, please do yourselves a favor and really dig deep into where the economics of mental wellness are going now. It is the biggest trend currently. It's only proven to increase over the next few years, but people are just barely starting to get onto it. They're, they're taking those baby steps because they didn't do the scientific research to find out why they're depressed, okay? All the stories in the world don't matter. Don't matter one iota if you don't know why you're having a problem. Why you're having that problem is mechanical. It is physical. It's not your past. It's not what happened this morning. It's I ate wrong, I drank wrong, I slept wrong for the last you know months, two months, 10 months, 24 months. So now my stomach, my gut biome isn't performing properly, which means that it's not allowing all the right uh, chemicals to release to my brain to get me moving in the right direction. So if, if we could, uh, if we could advise, <laughs> if you will, if we could advise you guys on anything, look deeply into the mental wellness market because that is going to be the biggest trend, at least for the next half decade. I mean, for the next five years, it's pretty obvious that this isn't, this isn't going away anywhere. We all know that we, we, nobody knows what's gonna to happen tomorrow. Nobody knows what's gonna happen next year. So this, this feeling of, of doubt, of discouragement, of not knowing what's gonna happen is gonna be very prevalent. It's going to be headline news for at least the next half decade. And then the repercussions of that, you know, uh, we saw some stats on what happened after 9-11. You know, after 9-11, it took years for people to recover. So people were worried about you know, going to a therapist and getting their therapy done and all those other things. So they went, they did their thing. Eight months later, they still felt horrible. 10 months, two years, five years. Because again, to harp on the same, to beat this horse to death again. Because when they were depressed after 9-11, they drank, they ate wrong, they couldn't sleep. PTSD is the, it's funny, PTSD is both the cause and the after effect of having your gut gone wrong. Because when you've got PTSD, you're not eating right. You're probably drinking too much. You might be self-medicating with drugs. You know, you're doing all these things to your stomach, which in turn makes it so you can't produce the chemicals that are gonna make you feel better. So you know, they, it's, this, it's a, a vicious cycle. That's, that's the word I was looking for. It's like this vicious cycle of, you know, did the PTSD make my gut go bad? Or did my gut going bad allow the PTSD to solidify itself and sink its claws even deeper? So your clients are having those conversations right now. Today, your clients are suffering with the PTSD 
of this last year. And I believe me, I do not mean to belittle that term. We have done so many interviews with folks who have suffered with PTSD, dealt with so many different experts. And that's why we understand that PTSD doesn't have to be a shooting or you know, a physical assault or anything like that. It can be the fear of your child dying from a virus. That's enough to give someone PTSD. And that's enough to get your clients to be so concerned that they put everything else in the back burner, that everything else is mindfulness, that everything else is, I'm, I wanna make sure my kids are fed. I don't care what I have for dinner. You know, I want to make sure my kids are in bed by eight o'clock, but eh, if I go to bed at two, three o'clock, whatever, that mentality is the after effect of the PTSD that a lot of folks felt over this last year. So we want to help you guys to create, uh, I'm sorry, cre uh, correct, correct what your clients have done to themselves over this last 12, 24, whatever months, you know, obviously we want you to feel better. That's why we're here. We want everybody to feel great. Our goal is to make everybody feel mentally better. Mm -hmm. But the best way to, for you to feel mentally better is to have happy clients that are willing to stroke that check every month. And please don't think me rude by saying it, but I think we're all business owners here. And we all know that we're all trying to move this thing forward. Just going to add in emotional triggers as Mel has been harping on here. Those emotional triggers are the things that are going to lead us down the long path as far as disease and, and, and other things that we pick up along the way, you know, when we're in that negative state of mind, when we can't turn that around for ourselves, that's when a lot of the physical stuff starts to happen to the body and the body starts to break down. So I really just want you to put some thought into, you know, just getting, just taking a few minutes to yourself on a daily basis and making some time to really make that connection between your spiritual self and your physical self, getting that alignment to match up again is so important today. And since that, we're just here to help. We, we really are passionate about helping people to find their peak performance again and just getting their body back on track.